Hey Europop, here's my little review of semi-final one. The first thing we saw, was girl skin. Whether empowering or degrading, it still puts bums on seats, speaking of which. The other singer made a political statement, but it was very subtle. On to the hosts, and I thought Petra was amazing again, the script clearly written for her, and felt completely believable. I wasn't as keen on Marlon, she seemed a bit awkward, but that could just be down to nerves. Looking at the lineup for Semi 1, and sorry I didn't get chance to mention my predictions, but I felt like nine countries were fairly certain, with a wild card that might become obvious on the night. So, what were my overall impressions of the songs, including the three pre qualifiers? Cyprus were up first, with a well performed, mid table, girl bop, so out of 15, that puts it about eighth. Serbia were next, with a lovely ballad. Taya's voice is like honey in my ears, honestly she could sing the pizza menu, and I'd be singing along. Lithuania next, with a nice modern bop with a fab bass line, it should easily qualify. Ireland were next, with some questionable singing, but massively elevated by the staging. The UK next, and much like Ireland, the singing was a bit up and down, but the staging was amazing. Ukraine next with a fab performance, in my opinion one of their best ever songs. Poland next, and sadly Luna's voice sounded a bit weak, and I'm also not sure about choosing chess, quite a boring game, for the staging. Croatia next, and baby lasagna's already won over the public, so the performance didn't really matter, although he's improving each time. Iceland next, and lovely Hera, although, that might be the problem, I think the public will always choose edgy over lovely these days which is a shame, but that's modern Eurovision. Germany performed next, and it sounded pretty decent, it's very chart-friendly, although maybe not very Eurovision-y. A bit of girl skin from Slovenia next, although accompanied by a pretty good, and interesting-sounding song. Finland next, with an epic bit of staging. Much to the outrage of plenty of people online, he had the audacity to show a bit of boy skin. Nobody seems to mind when a lady shows hers. It's an old joke from cinema, where someone is naked, but cleverly covered up by teapots, and newspapers, and the like. Moldova next, and I'm afraid I found it a bit boring, sorry. A nice lady, but probably an NQ this year, I'm afraid. Next up, were the Norwegian twins, who looked and sounded pretty good. I don't think it will win, but it's perfectly on message and exactly what you'd expect from Sweden. Azerbaijan next, and another song that I found a bit boring. A nice song, but not really exciting enough this year. Australia next, and I'm afraid I've heard them perform it better. It's heartbreaking for me, for obvious reasons, but I thought the staging was a bit school play. And like Hera for Iceland, they might be too nice to qualify. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but that's modern Eurovision, at least from the public's viewpoint, I'm afraid. Portugal next, and like Serbia, a beautifully performed ballad. After a bit of wonderful craziness from Finland last year, I worried we wouldn't see any nice ballads, so it's great that we already have a few. Last up is Luxembourg, with a quirky song, that seems to effortlessly mesh classic French, with modern beats. Although in a random turn of events this year, several song composers seem to be using the same beat. My drummer friend, said he doesn't really recognize it, and thinks it's a sort of slowed down swung funk, whatever that means. Although seeing how specific that makes it, it does seem a bit of a coincidence that so many songs feature it this year. I've gone off on a tangent, sorry about that. After the songs, Johnny Logan, the king of Eurovision, performed a song by Queen Laureen, which was a lovely gesture, that really moved me. After a great but risky joke by Petra, we unfortunately had a slightly out of place trio of songs, by an ex Swedish Eurovision entrant. So, on to the results, and I think the public did okay, and chose pretty well, matching my predictions, with Cyprus rounding out the 10 qualifiers. I felt a bit bad for Australia, so it'll be interesting to see how close they came. As Martin would say, we're good to go, for semi number two. And this one really has the opportunity for a few upsets as I mentioned way back in January. I think Switzerland is the standout from the first half, and the whole of the second half looks pretty strong. 
so I expect some drama over who qualifies, and it could be quite a show.